hello everyone so welcome in the new video in this video we will going to see how to use i2c interface how to configure the i2c interface on nucleo 144 board which is having stm32 microcontroller and for the same we will use this type of small setup so this is for the demonstration purpose here you can see i am using this proteus to explain uh, you this circuit diagram but actually we will perform the same on actual hardware so this is just for your understanding purpose so this is the microcontroller stm32 bit series microcontroller which is in our case nucleo 144 board uh, we are using arduino so Arduino will, will be like a receiver for the I2C and then we will simply print whatever Arduino will receive on serial monitor. Here one LED is also there. So on this Nucleo 144 board, one onboard LED is there which is PB7 uh, pin, right? Which LED is connected with PB7 pin. So we will use this LED to check means whether our code is uh, executing perfectly or not okay so this is for the error checking purpose means we can check the flow by simply writing some signal on this led means uh, let us say for particular function we will write function to turn on the led continuously then for particular flow we will uh, write to toggle this led and this is how we will check means uh, whether the execution is uh, executed properly or not so this is the connection so first we have to create a new project so this is our board this part number now initial all i use default mode so you can select yes or no anyway we will clear them so here we are using stm cube mx so now first of all i will simply clear all the pins And as per our requirement, first thing is we have to use crystal clock frequency and then I2C. So in connectivity, I will use simple I2C protocol, I2C1, okay, simple one uh, protocol. Uh, simply you have to select I2C. So you can see automatically it will configure these two pin PB5 and PB7 as a i2c clock i2c data so to understand this you must have basic knowledge of i2c protocol so first you should learn about this basics of i2c and then you can perform this experiment so now i'll simply change this from this two pin to any other pin right so for that you should know that which other pins can be configured as a this same i2c1 scl and sda so I know that this means we can use this PB8 and PB9 instead of PB6 and PB7. So I can simply click on PB8 and here I will simply check. Okay, this I2C1 SCL is there. So if I will select this, so it automatically enable this and it will disable this. Same way I will change this PB7 to PB9. So this is I2C1 SDA. This is for data. Okay, so here I am simply changing these two pins from 6, 7 to 8, 9. And why I am doing this? Because on PB7, our onboard LED is there. Okay, and for this experiment, we are using that LED. So, I am simply configuring PB7 as a output. Okay, so required configuration is done. And uh, you can see only crystal is selected, only one i2c protocol is uh, configured and this gpio output okay so now simply no need to check all this okay we will use default clock however as per your experiment you can play with these numbers but right now this is just simple experiment simple demonstration so i will not going to change anything in this clock configuration part then in project manager, I have to simply give any name. So this is I2C first 
demo okay and uh, in tool chain i am using k okay so that's why i'm selecting mdkr right and then simply you have to click on generate code so it will generate the code for you now project is successfully generated so simply open the project it will open this created project in kale environment so this is our first demo so as you know we have to change in this main.c file okay now for this experiment or for this demonstration i have a small bunch of uh, lines or you can say codes so first thing is uh, i am simply using same code okay so to save the time so first thing is uh, in main function outside of the main function in this user area you have to declare two things one is this data buffer it's a character type array and this is simple message hello world okay so we will going to send this hello world and second is integer we are declaring ret as an integer so we will check means whether the function is executed properly or not so to save the return value we will use this ret value right so only two things required and i will put this code in comment section so you can reuse this code and then in main function this is the main function right so this line will initialize the i2c and then in while one we will simply send our required data so for that this line is there okay and what this line will do this line is actually using this api hal i2c master transmit so if you know the basic concept of i2c then in i2c only master can initiate the communication okay it it could be transmit it could be receive so only master can initiate so for example our stm is a master right so in this circuit if master want to send something so master only master can initiate that okay it will indicate okay i want to send something on this address and if that uh, device is present on that address that that device will simply receive as a slave same way suppose master want to receive anything then on also only master can initiate that okay i want to receive message from this address from this slave address and now as an acknowledgement this this that slave will send the message to the master okay so here we are using this api okay i have to see master transmit now here you can see as an argument first thing is handler of the i2c so this is hi2c1 so in your code it will be automatically declared uh, here you can see right so first argument is handler second is address so let us say uh, here i am using 4 as an address okay because i found some uh, reference code for the arduino as a receiver for the i2c and in that code Uh, address was mentioned for so that's why i'm using for address okay so anyway we will going to change this and check whether this really uh, required to set same address both the side or not but here you can see i'm set uh, setting this address as a for okay so whatever message master will send it will send on this address for okay and this is the required thing that you have to do for shift left side uh, one time right so that's why i'm using this syntax third argument is our message so our message is data buffer you can see it's hello world okay so here i am simply sending this so this is the message okay we are using type casting on side integer 8 and then finally how many bytes we want to send okay so here i am using 11 number 11 bytes so you can see in hello world if you will count h e l 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 okay so up to this word hello word it will send so that's why this uh, argument is actually uh, for the how many bytes you want to send okay if you will simply change this from 11 to 1 it will only send h right and then this is timeout function so you can send uh, you can uh, set a random number so here i am using 100 as a value now uh, once this line will be executed it will return something right so we are storing that into ret that is integer and then this lines will simply check okay so what this line will check 
so first thing is this line in first if loop you can see we are comparing whether that return is equal to hl okay or not okay now if this ret is equal to hl okay it means that that receiver is present having this m for address uh, for the i2c and master can successfully uh, send uh, means master uh, can uh, able to send this data to that receiver okay so if receiver is present then ret will be equal to hl okay but let us say if something uh, means receiver is not present or connections are not properly then definitely this function will not return hl okay so here you can see in first if part i am simply writing hi on pb7 which is our led okay right pin pb7 one so it will simply turn on that led but if this ret is equal to okay so it will toggle the same pin okay so your two two things are there first is if led will remain on it means that something is uh, wrong means whether that receiver is not present or some uh, address related issue is there some connection related issue is there and if everything is okay then that led will simply toggle means that led will turn on and turn off with interval of 200 millisecond okay and after that we are simply using this delay of 1 second so after each second after each uh, interval of 1 second it will send same message again and again because this part is in while one okay so what you will observe on the stm32 nucleo144 board that led pb7 will be continuously uh, turning on and turning off okay with interval of 1 second and it will send same message again and again and again right so this is what the uh, configuration for the stm32 okay so now simply we will build the code meanwhile you can see this is the arduino code which i found from the internet okay so i am not uh, means changing anything so this arduino will be the receiver okay so this first part you can see in setup part we have uh, this first wire dot begin so it will uh, be used to uh, enable the i2c with address 4 okay so in argument you can see four address is there so this is the for address it will configure a uh, 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 program as a slave device okay then wire on receive so this is another function receive event okay so this is here we are registering this event so if anything uh, is available on the i2c pin it will simply execute this and then we are simply setting the baud rate okay because after receiving that message we want to send the same message on uart okay on uart of the arduino so that we can simply check uh, over here in serial monitor part okay so that's why we are setting baud rate okay in while loop in infinite loop simple delay is there of 100 second 100 millisecond right and in on this receiver event function you can see what uh, this function is doing this function is simply checking that whether the the something means some message is available on i2c pin or not so it is it is checking that whether this wire dot available is greater than 0 or not okay and if this is greater than 0 then it will simply read the message it will store the message in this character c and it will print the same on uart okay now here it could be uh, of length of 1 byte or 2 byte or 10 byte okay it depends on transmitter so in our case we are sending hello world so it will receive whole hello world continuously it will send the same on uart okay without any space or any a uh, new line and then after receiving that particular message it will simply uh, write a new line character so our next time uh, whenever this stm will send hello world it should be printed on the next line okay so this is the code now you can see this is the stm32 nucleo144 board and this is the arduino board and now first i will upload this Arduino's code on Arduino board, so only Arduino is connected with the laptop. 
now i'm uh, uploading this so now you can see arduino is programmed now i will simply uh, connect this stm32 okay and we will upload our code on nucleo 144 board right here you can see connection is there and now we will simply upload using this option okay and now you can see stm32 is also now uh, programmed as per our requirement now i will simply connect these two wires okay so actually on this board on back side you can see our pb8 and pb9 pins are there in this uh, connector okay so i am using this pb8 and pb9 okay and pb7 is actually onboard led right and this is the ground so only three connections are there serial clock serial data and ground right and now uh, to check whether these things work properly or not we have to simply open the serial monitor of arduino right and now we have to simply reset this and here you can see we have this message hello world and this led is also you can see it is continuously turning on and turning off with interval of one second so we are successfully able to transmit our message hello world from stm32 to uart on i2c bus okay and to check whether these things are actually working or not what we can do we can simply change this address from 4 to 5 okay arduino this is arduino's program and now i'm changing this address from 4 to 5 and I will repeat all this thing. STM code will be same as it is. Only Arduino part will uh, change. We will try to change. Okay. So simply remove this connection. Okay. Upload the code. Right. And now connect this two wire once again. And now simply press reset but this time you can see LED is continuously on and this is because of this function so here RET is not equal to OK because address is not present and that's why this LED is continuously remain on okay but if you want to change this again from 5 to 4 then you can simply change this value upload the code and now it should start again now check this simply connect this device and you can see communication is started right because now stm got this address from the arduino so arduino slave as a slave with address of 4 right it is present and that's why stm now able to send some message here in our example it is hello world and on arduino that message is received and that is displayed on the terminal so this is what for the today's video okay in future we will try to explore this i2c more in detail okay i will come with some complex experiments so that you can easily understand and you can use it in your real time example real time experiment or whatever application you want to develop so this is what for today's video if you like my work then please like my youtube videos and subscribe my youtube channels thank you very much